to a, my house from the foe before I get to success and I came back through the aisle and I heard the whistle go out. And I look, it's the homies crossing, coming toward me. I whistle back. We connected, walked up, shook the homies' hands. It's about 15 of the homies, niggas is mad, niggas teary-eyed, crying. Blood, it's fuck this shit, blood, that old nigga shot them, me, me, They ain't finna be doing us like that. So immediately, my antenna went up. I saw they think they gonna kill one of us and shoot our people, nigga. We, we, we ain't going for that. Look, man, fuck all they talking, homie. Tonight, da da da, I called a meeting, I host a meeting, bam. And from there, history was resolved. For three days and three nights, we went into a shootout, nigga, with the police, with what we thought was their family. It was ended up being the police. It was the sheriff, Los Angeles sheriff, LAPD, uh, detectives, Femi SWAT jumped in on the third day. But the first night, Femi, when the attack went down, Feel me? Under my structure, everything was my structure. So niggas wanna, and that's the crazy part about it, right? Niggas wanna, <laughs> niggas wanna try to slay, slay me. When nigga, I, I'm the nigga. I'm the nigga. I'm the blueprint, niggas. I, just, I, don't, I don't get this shit. I'm the blueprint, nigga. I was the motherfucking blueprint. It's like these chess pieces. Check this out, homie. Bam, 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 bam. I'm the blueprint. So how do you turn that around and to snitch it. I don't get it, man. So anywho, day one, I sent two of the homies, bam. Car gets stuck in the middle of the road, as y'all seen in the fake bullshit documentary, but what the documentary fell to tell you, they, they try to dome two of us. They let off like 30 rounds and try to kill two of my young stuff, the niggas who was in the car. So what happened was, I structured to put a brick and a stick on the, on the steering wheel. Bam, bam. Hit the building, blow, blow the whole building up. Feel me? However, plan one didn't work. They rolled out, and the motherfucker stopped right in the middle of L. Damn, blood. We all in the cut, in the trenches. It's jet dark, because we knocked the lights out on Imperial. Had all them knocked down the day before. So it's dark. But not knowing, I'm not aware. And at the time, my little brother, rest in peace, La Boy Rico, and my relative Demon, and my relative Birdman, you know, gang, my little bro was on my right hand shoulder. So I had him tucked away, like, keeping up, kind of keeping the wood over him, you know what I'm saying? But at the same token, let him, let him follow my lead. And he, he, he's in training. Basically, he's in training because, you know, my little brother was following my footsteps, man. You know what I mean? Uh, unfortunately, I lost my little brother 17 because if I hadn't lost my little brother, boy, listen, niggas called hell for me, but the both of us, oh, man, the world wasn't going to be prepared for that, man. They weren't going to be prepared for that shit right there. Me and him? Oh, no. Fuck no. So, anywho, like I say, day one, we, 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 we getting down. <laughs> Crossfire, boom, blah, blah, blah. We was changing fire. But before the fire let off, like I said, the car stopped in front of him. When the car stopped, the homies rolled. Cause I, now mind you, I already tell them, everything that I say, do. If you don't do what I say, you're not making it. Do what I say, do. Do it how I say, do it. Don't question me about it. Don't be like, oh, well, why do it like that, blood? Just do it, homie. Because I know what I'm talking about and I know what I'm doing. If I had to do it, that's how I'm going to do it. So do it. Boom. Niggas push up on the car. Boom. Bust the doors open. They tuck and roll. Flip and roll. And stay try to jump out. You flip and roll. You ask yourself a question. But why flip and roll, big cow? Whereas my daddy been a war veteran, my uncle's been a war veteran, it was taught to me. Now, if you're in a situation, you're in an ongoing car and vehicle, and you gotta hit, you gotta tuck and roll, you tuck, you flip. Because when you flip, you can break your balance, you can break your fall with your body and your body. So you take your elbows, you flip, and you roll, boom, boom, you're on your feet. You're in traction, you're moving, you're running. But if you jump, you're trying to jump and leap. You're trying to jump and land on your feet. You're not gonna be able to break your fall. You don't have no traction to be able to break your fall on. Chances are you break your wrist, you can break your elbow, you can break something before by the time you hit the pavement. Not to mention the car's going anywhere between five to 10 miles an hour. That's fast when you get ready to jump out of the car. When we talking about tuck and roll, that's fast. You feel what I'm saying? So, 
tell them tuck and roll. First time the car did that, they tuck and roll, boom, they jumped out, they tucked the roll, the car stopped. When they tuck the roll, we take cover, we on them. The car stopped. Cease fire. They shut down fire. God damn it. What we gonna do? Go back, get the car. Get the car, nigga. They go back, get the car, back it all the way up. Now mind you, these white motherfucking devils could start killing us right on the spot. They could start knocking homies. They let us go get that motherfucking car, back it all the way back up to the projects again, fix it like I needed to do it, and do it all over again. But this time, that motherfucker ran straight, yeah, hit the building, boom! And you heard gunfire come from everywhere from that side. They was on our ass. We back. For like at least a good three to four to five minutes. Stop. Reload. Retreat. We gone. These motherfuckers got ammo. We out of bullets. We gotta go. So, however, this went on for three days. Three days, man. I sent them. We hit them. Mortuaries, everything. Everything you motherfuckers seen on camera, I structured and ordered it. Yeah. Because I didn't give a fuck at that time in my life. Nigga, I was a demon. I was the devil, like I said. Nigga, I took the red suit and I wore it. And I wore it proudly. And I wore it swell. So, yeah, nigga, I ordered it. I ordered. I ordered. Everything that's already in the documentary, I'm not incriminating myself. I'm not telling on myself none of that. I'm giving the theory of the story facts. So motherfuckers can get off this slander and shit and understand the difference between a known informant, a snitch, a nigga who turned on his co-offended, a nigga who turned on somebody he did a crime with, or a nigga who just flat out snitched. So, in the midst of all this, man, when this war took place, like I told you earlier, uh, old man was best friends in cahoots with Tom Bradley. So when the phone call get to Bradley, oh, Bradley gets to go to work. I want all them some bitches. I want them goddamn, he, he do a J. Edgar Hoover move. I want them bounty hunters now, they picked up every last one of them some bitches. So he put our all part bulletin out on us. So this is what bought, this is how OSS was formed. This is how Operation Safe Street was formed from the streets and then from the streets, it went to the county jail. The OSS, OSS, is, OSS was specifically a crew of sheriffs only that's concentrated solely on gangs. They didn't fuck with robberies, they didn't fuck with bank robberies, they didn't fuck with uh, homicides, they fuck with gangs. So anything dealing with a gang homicide, gangs robbing, gangs hitting banks, gangs hitting jewelry, because that's what gangs did, that was day for a They studied it, they, they mastered us. And early in the 80s when the gangs really, really start flourishing in the early 80s, they grew right along with us. So they started learning our culture fast. So that's why when you went to jail and you went up in one of they shits, you get the OSS, they got the whole Los Angeles map on the wall and they got every motherfucking gang that exists all the way down to the numbers. They know how many soldiers, how many heads are actually active which from their statics for these hoods. How many gangs has numbers in them. That's how accurate they was on their shit. So this who we were up against. So um, they came out after us. So when, when the first arrest took place, again, like I told y'all earlier, take you back to when a little, when a little homie fell on the porch and he, he fell on this nigga's porch, which I told you was Brian Decker. And the reason why I'm giving up his name because this is one of the mother, this is the first snitch to snitch on us. This is the nigga who gave us up. This is the nigga who gave them my blueprint. This the motherfucker who gave my blueprint to him. He just didn't want to get on the stand and point us out. So he fleed the country, he fleed the state, got on immediately, got up out of here. Before they can get to him to bring him back, he got up out of here. He agreed, signed his agreement with him, they let his ass out, and that nigga left town. So, confidential number two was one of the motherfuckers who got picked up with us when the raid went down and they hit us at a house party and they raided us. They raided us separate. They picked up three or four homies. See, this is what this is what this is why I say motherfuckers so dumb on this internet and, and they get so caught up and lost with the rumors and that bullshit when motherfuckers don't even know the significance. The first 
five to six of us got picked up way ahead of us, before me. So if anybody went to tell, do some snitching and telling, them five or six could have told off front with, with some of the names, like the Malcolm Hortons and certain names that was named off on the, on the, on the documentary, them was the ones that got picked up first. Okay. Who they said made statements. Yeah. Homies never made no statements. The only statements was ever made was when we made them to our district attorney and the president of the district attorney and our attorney as the agreement to our deals and shit. That's when we copped out this. Yeah, yeah, they said, well, you, you had this and you had this. Yeah, yeah, I did, man. Boom. Sign my stick, get my time, we gone. That's what we did. We did that. Every last one of us. So if niggas want to slander that, say, call that snitching nigga, you call it what you want to call it. It's called plea bargaining. It's plea bargaining, exactly. But any real nigga, any con that tell you, a lot of us have done many a times because it's willing and dealing. It's a smart thing to do, nigga. So anyhow, Byron Decker get caught up. He give him my blueprint. When I say the blueprint, yeah, uh, money on the BJ, you know, he threw the meeting and and, and uh, you know, this cat with this long perm, I ain't gonna say his name, but just, just giving that that identity. He was one of the cats that was on the trial, who was the only one on bail, who wasn't even supposed to be on trial, along with three more of the homies that was on trial with us, who wasn't supposed to even be there, especially the big homie for first generation. Feel me? Cause this is what the case all resolved bound to from the politics of our hood. Cause we had niggas on there who wasn't supposed to be there, dog. So we gon' free the innocent regardless. We can't take these niggas down with us. Period. It's the rules. So, now, he give up the blueprint. Yeah, uh, this guy um, bought him, bought uh, BJ a big old army statue, uh, army a uh, uh, statue bag of green one at the meeting and all I know is that he gave it to BJ and BJ told um, 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 one of the other homies to get the bag and he got the bag and then I remember his brother Rico walked up and his brother Rico took the bag so he put my little brother in right yeah. so he said yeah Rico took the bag so then Rico just he said so what 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 did they do with the bag then and did you ever look in the bag this is how they crushed the nigga so he said um um well Nah, I didn't see what was in the bag. He said, okay, because this is all in our paperwork, right? With transcript and you're trialing. Yeah. But they got him on our transcript in the beginning. They just didn't have him as a confidential informant to get on the stand like they did Carr, because like I say, he left town. Exactly. But they had his original statement, and that's what got us bound over his and his. Feel me? Yeah. And then our own admittance is what got us bound over, because we had already took our deal, so we wasn't going to trial. That's why we got bound over to preliminary. Because we know in preliminary, that's when our plea bargain was going to be taken and they was going to take our deal. Because we had already pleaded in arraignment. See, we already set this shit up in arraignment. We had been sitting in the county damn near nine months already. Feel me? Yeah. So, <clears throat> so now, go, going back, so Brian gives up the, you know, the, the blueprint and telling about all these guns and shit I supposed to have had and, 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 and the bag and everything that I got. And then uh, from there, they had a list. So now, they start putting out warrants. They looking for niggas on this name, this name, this name. So they hit the hood one night. Whew. Bam, bam. They picked up a couple of the homies. The homies they picked up, two was on the list, a couple of they wasn't on the list. They tried to sweat them. Who you know did the HK thing with me? I don't know shit. Released all of them, let them go. Even the two who was on the list, let them go. They didn't have shit on them. Niggas, man, I don't know who the fuck y'all talking about. Nigga, we don't know shit. Let the homies go. Homies come straight in, straight out, get at me. They get at me and the homie. Ugh. They, they, they got your name, they got doop doop whoop, they got whoop 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 name, they got Bob, they got whoop. So we all know they looking for us now. Because yeah. the homies inform us and tell us. So, man, this old nappy ass police named Nappy Head Rally, man. We used to call him Nappy Head Rally. Old Nappy Head, BB Head ass motherfucker, little skinny bony motherfucker. I'm on 111. Now this is doing, this is about probably going on the second month. The chase is on. They picking us up and they looking for niggas. They knocking down doors. Three or four o'clock in the morning. Boom. They tear gas shit. Boom. Get out, get out. Running in the house. Such, 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 such. You're in the rest for the warrant up. Da, da, da. They taking niggas to jail, right? I should they turn to a high publicity case. Got the news cameras, all that shit, right? So. Now they looking for me, they, they, they tell them we looking for a main two suspects, main two care the leaders, woo woo woo. Murder John, da da da, okay. Now my, my mom's don't live in the hood no more. My mom's living 31st and Griffin, my little ascot. She live down there in the bottoms. 
So I, I go to the house to mine and I come to the hood. So uh, at this time, I'm like, man, these motherfuckers, they coming at certain times, but they ain't there in the daytime. So we playing on our ass, we in the hood, kicking and chilling, you know, all that shit. We go to a house party one night, bro, we're about 15, 16 deep. Man, that motherfucker gigging. We mob outside. We standing outside, chilling, smoking. Next thing you know, you just seen the birdie drop. <clears throat> I mean, that motherfucker literally just, you couldn't even hear him when he warmed me, hoovered up on us. You couldn't even hear him. He just dropped. <clears throat> and the motherfucker lit up. <clears throat> the whole parking lot. We and my homeboy Maxwell park lot on Imperial Highway in the No, right? Which is where OG Hook used to live on that side of the No. So we over there at a party at my homegirl Black Val in them house. They got, they giving a bomb ass party, so we there. So the whole, the price, all type of motherfuckers outside. When that birdie lit up, the police came out of nowhere. Niggas come off roofs, swat niggas, and drew down. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get the fuck down. Motherfuckers ran up on me with the car being like that. Hey Johnson, you under the arrest for murder, sa da da da. Point that motherfucker right in my head. Boom, got me. I get on my knees, right? But let me back up before. Let me back up, cause to go back to that, cause I was trying to tell you something about Nappy Head and O'Reilly, and I got off the subject of it. Yeah. O'Reilly fucked around and pulled me over. Not pulled me over, literally like driving, but I was strolling through 111, it was me, three more, three of the homies, and, and he whooped up in the car, whoop, and he jumped right out, bam! When he jumped out, pulled it, got his own reports, searched his, him and his partner, he pulled out his pocket, out the little, the little white book, flipped the paper over, looked at it, he said, man, what is your name? Walked to one of the homies, the homie give him an alias name. The other homie give him his real name. They run their name. He said, what's your name? I said, well, me? I said, oh, shit, my name is Charles Gooden. He said, Charles Gooden? I said, yeah, my name is Charles Gooden, man. C-H-A-R-L-E-S-G-O-O-D-E-N. Most niggas can't spell like that. They couldn't spell a name. When you tell an alias, police tell you spell it. Yeah. And nigga be other, stop. Stutter. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I said, I'm on it. So he looked at me, ran my name. Charles, you good? Mm -hmm. Came back, I hear it come back over the radio, clean, boom. They let us go. He didn't realize he let the main nigga go right now. It came back to his ass. When he ran my name, the day he left, the night they came and whooped on us, yeah. guess who in the crowd? He, he never hit a rap. Yeah. When the motherfucker hit, threw the car on me and threw that on me, and they slammed me on my knees. And when, when the detective walked right up and he pulled me up like this, and he put the flashlight on me, he said, this him. And he pulled a hook up, this both of them. Yeah. Rusted. That nigga said, oh, hey, wait, hold on. He stopped, he said, this is Charles Gooden, right? Ain't your name Charles Gooden? I go like, I just looked at the nigga and laughed. He said, motherfucker. <laughs> and he turned the other party, that was my beat, that was my arrest, I had his ass. I had that slick motherfucker. So anyway, that's the night they get us. Yeah. We go in, we deep. Now, mind you, it's already homies arrested before it's in there. Yeah. So the night we get in, the same night we get in, they put us all in holding tanks together. See, this is what I'm saying when niggas be having shit so misconstrued and fucked up, so they put it all in holding tanks. So off top, we already know they got 72 hours to arrange us. Mm -hmm. They got 48 hours before the detectives come talk to us. Feel me? Yeah. Somebody gonna come holler. So, boom, the first 24 hours, we don't get none of that. The night they arrest us, we so deep in that motherfucker, we beating shit down, we beating Crips ass. Anything coming at us cripping, we fucking over niggas right now. We beat niggas up. Shoot us straight to the county, they get us out of there at night, they transfer us. Shipped us right up out of there. So now we spending the night in reception. Yeah. So we down in the whole tank, fucking up shit. Shoot our ass to fuck straight to the hole. Feel me? So we go to arraignment from the hole. They take all the crime. They say they call us the HK crime. They took all of us from the hole to our arraignment. That's how we got arraigned. Yeah. From arraignment, take us back to the hole. We ain't even hit the main line yet. We ain't hit the blood mouth yet. We still on, we go straight from there to the hole. So bam. <clears throat> now before this, like I'm saying, the, the 24 hours we, we, we locked up in the 108, 108th Street Station, LAPD. Boom. They never come in and took none of us out until we get to the county. This is when the detectives come to holler at us. By that time, I'm already screwed all the homies. Feel me? We already talked. 
Ain't nobody saying shit. So every nigga went out, 